the language of this gospel doesn't fit our contemporary world. It was, had meaning way back in the time of Jesus, and the language would be understood in a different way in the time of Jesus. But how to interpret this into the present age? It's clear that it's not keeping the law which is of primary importance. It's keeping a relationship. Now, the Jewish people had the covenant, which was an agreement with God. You will be our God, we will be your people. And therefore, we will be faithful to you, not because of the law. The law is merely an expression of the covenant. It's a bond, it's a promise. It involves honor, truth, loyalty. That's what a covenant means. We all make covenants in life. Some are more important than others, but we're all involved somewhere in agreements. And it's to honor your word. It's to honor your bond, your agreement. That's really important, not keeping the law. You can keep the law, but not be faithful to the covenant. People keep the law, but they're angry and they're selfish, but they come to mass and they keep the law. The covenant is different. The covenant involves relationship, relationship with the master, relationship with the Lord. If you keep the covenant, you honor the relationship, the law will fall into place. You could keep the law and not honor the covenant. I mean, you can be faithful to your word, but be bitter and selfish about your fidelity. That's not really keeping the covenant, it's keeping the law. It will come up at school, it'll come up, say, you can cheat, but then you dishonor yourself. You dishonor truth. If you lie, you offend yourself, the dignity of who you are. You violate a covenant and agreement. When you're in school, you take on a responsibility to do your homework or to tell the truth or to be attentive. If you don't do that, somehow you're wanting. There's something missing. So the idea of honor, honoring a covenant, that's what's important here. The master will come at a time we do not expect, but will find us honorable, truthful, reliable, generous. That's what this gospel means. In marriage, you don't, you're not faithful in a marriage because of a law. You're faithful in marriage because your honor is at stake, your truth, your integrity, your sense of who you are. It's keeping the covenant uh, Jesus says in the Gospel of John there at the Last Supper, he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you don't love me, you won't keep the commandments. The commandments will be kept because of a relationship. So keep this in mind. We journey into this day not to keep the law, but to honor the covenant. We journey into this day to witness the fact we're followers of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim Jesus Christ in our lives, not by keeping the law, but by keeping our word in a covenant, in a relationship we have with Jesus Christ. If that makes sense, you want to carry this into your day. And when you journey through this day, stop here and there and say, I wonder what the Lord is asking of me here. What's God asking of me? Some generosity, some forgiveness, some understanding, uh, some sharing to help somebody else during recess to make a new friend, to see somebody who feels left out and try to include the person. That would be to do something in the name of Jesus. That would be very important. Or if somebody is hurting in your class, to find time to, to listen to that person, to talk to that person, to befriend that person, 
This is very important because this is the whole meaning of a church. A church is not based on law. A church is based on our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not the size of the church. It's not the riches of the church. It's not the numbers that make up a church. It's the depth. How deep are we? How profound, how faithful, how honorable, how truthful, how generous. That's, that's, the, that's the real meaning of a living church. So keep this in mind here, because this gospel teaches us something that really can make a difference in our day today.